This is the Georgia Farm Monitor. Since 1966, your source for state and national agribusiness news and features for farmers and consumers about Georgia's number one industry, agriculture. The Georgia Farm Monitor is produced by the state's largest general farm organization, the Georgia Farm Bureau. Now, here are your hosts, Ray D'Alessio and Kenny Bergamy. Hi there and welcome to History in the Making. Yes, our very first Thanksgiving special here on the Georgia Farm Monitor. I'm Ray D'Alessio. And I'm Kenny Bergamy. Thankful that you tuned in. And here's what's coming up. Love it or not, fruitcake is a holiday tradition. And here in Georgia, there's one company that is world famous for its fruitcakes. But if fruitcake isn't your thing, we are cooking up an easy bake pecan pie that'll have your guests begging for more. And then later, the official pardoning of the White House turkey. How did it start and why George H.W. Bush wasn't the first commander in chief to exercise that pardon? These stories and so much more starting right now on the Georgia Farm Monitor. As we gather around the table this year for Thanksgiving dinner, it is important we don't take the food for granted, considering that nearly 20% of Georgians, well above the national average, don't know where their next meal is coming from. That's why food banks like Second Harvest of South Georgia in Valdosta and the people who donate their time, money, and food to it are so important. Damon Jones has the story. It's the season for giving, and that's exactly what a number of farming operations are doing, including Corbett Farms in Lake Park, as they partner with the Georgia Food Bank Association and the Second Harvest of South Georgia program to help combat a major issue that is affecting the state. People think of hunger as a third world issue or even an urban issue. One in three children in South Georgia live in a food insecure home. And so people are really, I'm startled. I think Georgians should be startled at the rates of this that are plaguing our communities. Our organization does have a lot of programs. We run our Kids Cafe after school feeding program. We run our Teachers Harvest program, which is a free school supply store for teachers. We do provide disaster relief, working with FEMA and with GEMA, as well as the food bank and with our Farm to Family program, which is our effort to rescue produce that's being unused and get it to Georgia families. Here the last couple of years has really kind of started giving back to communities instead of just everything being about business. Um, you know, for us with the food bank, we have plenty of produce that we either throw down on the ground or won't make uh, market specifications, you know, for retail or food service, stuff like that. And it's something that someone can eat it. It's not a, there's no, nothing wrong with it. It's not like it's bad or um, you know, harmful in any way. So our biggest goal is why throw it down when we can give it to the food bank? I, if I remember correctly, like 235,000 meals was the estimated amount uh, that we gave to the Georgia Food Bank Association last year. This year, I'd say we're on track to probably do about the same, uh, if not maybe a little more. Donors, whether it's a manufacturer or a retailer or a farmer, will get in touch with us and we have a fleet of vehicles and drivers that go out, they will get these donations. We bring them back here, check things for food safety, and then work with our 425 partner agencies to distribute that to families in need. Well, you know, there, there's nothing better than, than giving back to people. You know, it, it's not a, we don't look at it as a charity. It's, it's we're doing something good for people that need something. You know, um, food, everyone needs food. And, you know, we feel like we're producing an item that typically most people eat. So there's nothing wrong with it. Why not give it to someone who needs it? There are lots of different ways to donate to the food bank. You can donate your time by coming and volunteering. You can donate funds by visiting our website, feedingsga.org. All that information is there. You can also give by raising your voice and helping us to advocate for issues that are important to rural Georgia. I would say every, every producer has something that they're either throwing away or simply can't market. If that's the case, you need to be talking to your Georgia Food Bank Association or your local food bank, period, if you're somewhere else outside the state of Georgia. Uh, there, there's a lot of pride in knowing that you're giving something to someone and not ex expecting something back in return. Reporting from Valdosta, I'm Damon Jones for the Georgia Farm Monitor. 
During the holiday season, a lot of families across the country and around the world have made fruit cakes a part of their tradition. Safe to say, most of those delicious cakes originate here in Georgia. If you've ever tasted a world famous Claxton fruit cake, this is where it was made in Evans County, Georgia. The bakery actually began operations in 1910. It was founded by an Italian immigrant by the name of Mr. Savino Tos, who came to the United States in 1908. Uh, Mr. Tos was a pastry maker by trade, and he settled in New York City, uh, worked in a hotel, uh, but he grew tired of the city life and he had heard a, a great deal about the South. And uh, so he heard of an opportunity to move to Macon, Georgia, work in an ice cream plant. So he, he moved to Macon. Uh, but unfortunately, that business melted on him after he had been there for about six months. He had met a girl, a young girl from Savannah, and was going down to see her. Uh, he came through the small town of Claxton, which at the time was a, a small agricultural community uh, in 1910. And he uh, liked the townspeople. Uh, they were very friendly, and he also liked the fact that the town had no bakery. So he settled down and opened the Claxton Bakery here in 1910. Parker's father started working at the Claxton Bakery as a young boy. My dad decided to specialize. Uh, he didn't want to be just a small town bake shop. So uh, one of the very popular items that the bakery made in the early days was fruitcake during the holidays. It wasn't until the 1950s that the now famous fruitcakes became a recognizable name brand. A gentleman from Tampa, Florida was in Claxton working here at, on some equipment at the ice plant. Uh, he was a member of the Tampa Civitan Club. Uh, his group or organization was looking for something they could sell to raise funds in their community. Uh, so he walked across the street here Happened to run into my dad here at the bakery and they talked. Uh, he decided to take some fruitcake back with him to Tampa. Uh, so he took three or 400 pounds back. It didn't take him long for them to sell that product. He was back to get more. Dale Parker told me that one Georgia commodity plays a significant role in the cake's success. Of course, one of the key components in our product is pecans. Uh, Georgia pecans have been have long been a staple and a use or a, 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 an ingredient in Claxton fruitcake, and we're very proud of that. Um, Georgia grown is also uh, an emphasis on our website operations because we carry a lot of different products on our website. And even though the Parker family has been around the fruitcake product for many years, Dell said he does not get tired of it. Never, never. A day seldom goes by that I don't walk by that sample can up front and, and flip a couple out. Always a fruitcake at Christmas. I will let you in on a secret and tell you that my mother made her own fruitcake. So, <laughs> that's kind of a laughing point. <laughs> well, we are just getting started here on our special Thanksgiving edition of The Monitor. Coming up, the story behind the presidential turkey pardon. Plus, Marsha Crowley and I pay tribute to our forefathers and show you prepare ahead meals that'll help make your Thanksgiving day stress-free. Hi, I'm Amy McCord. I'm from Thompson, Georgia, and I'm thankful for my family. I'm Gary Black, Commissioner of Agriculture from Georgia. We live in, live in commerce. Uh, I'm thankful to the Lord's grace that he looked and saved somebody like me, which is, I don't get over. In 1989, George H.W. Bush became the first president to officially pardon a turkey at Thanksgiving. But the roots of this ceremony go much further back in our history. In 1864, President Abraham Lincoln declared the first national day of Thanksgiving. Now, earlier in the year, he had been presented with a bird which he gave to his young son, Tad, to raise for the Lincoln Christmas dinner. Tad was about eight years old. He nicknamed the bird Jack and grew very attached to it. And so as Christmas time approached, he asked the president to spare the turkey. And this may be the first unofficial presidential turkey pardon. In 1947, President Harry S. Truman welcomed the National Turkey Federation and the Poultry and Egg Board to the White House and accepted several turkeys. 
Now, many people believe that Truman was the first president to pardon a turkey. But in fact, President Truman was more of a greet and eat type of president and in 1948 remarked to reporters that the birds would come in real handy for a Christmas dinner that he was planning for 25 guests at his home in Independence, Missouri. There are two other unofficial presidential turkey pardons. President Kennedy didn't have a lot of use for White House ceremonies unless they involved astronauts, but on November 18th he stepped into the Rose Garden and accepted a 55-pound bird that had a sign on it which said, Good eating, Mr. President. Kennedy looked at the bird and said, well, maybe we should let this one grow a bit more. And tragically, four days later, he was assassinated in Dallas. In 1987, President Reagan was the first president to actually use the word pardon. He had been asked a question about Iran-Contra and pardons associated with that event, and instead suggested that perhaps Charlie, the bird that he had been presented with, deserved the pardon. And so history records that George H.W. Bush was the first president to officially pardon a turkey. Each of the presidents that followed him, President Clinton, President George W. Bush, and President Obama, have graciously taken time from their busy schedules running the business of the nation to participate in this American tradition. Happy Thanksgiving, Mr. President. And we welcome you back, ye faithful viewers of the Georgia Farm Monitor. And we welcome you in to our feast, where today we have prepared for you a delicious Thanksgiving meal that will make your palate melt. All right, I'm not gonna talk like a pilgrim. I can't do it. No, don't do it, please don't. <laughs> Everybody, welcome back to the Georgia Farm Monitor, and yes, to our special Thanksgiving edition of Meals from the Field. As you see, Marsha and I, dressed up for the occasion, feeling very festive, feeling like pilgrims today. So good to see you again. You good? Thank I dress like this every Thanksgiving. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> Thank you for playing along. But uh, again, Thanksgiving, I know you were kind of reluctant to do this because people kind of have their own thing They have their own traditions and, but. Um, but you're gonna give them some ideas today. We're what do we get? All right, everything we're doing today, you can make ahead, which is good. That's okay. me. All right, the first thing is a twice baked potato casserole. You bake about three to four pounds of potatoes, mm -hmm. obviously, twice baked potatoes. All right, you're gonna add, this is a cup of milk, a cup of sour cream, and I will just tell you right up front, none of this is low calorie. So if <laughs> As you it don't shouldn't like be that, on Thanksgiving then, no, Day. you shouldn't. Right, mix that up. And you let, obviously let the potatoes cool enough so that you can cut them in bite-sized pieces. We're gonna add to that some salt and pepper. And I love uh, stuff that you can make ahead. It kind okay. of frees the day up. And just All to right. let you know, we need to hurry this up because I've got the Mayflower running outside. Oh, 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 so, okay. yes. Mayflower we, cap. Okay, yes. you pour that over the potatoes. That was a cup of sour cream and a cup of milk. Mm -hmm. You could use low fat milk and low fat sour cream if you wanted to cut the calories just a little bit. Um, I'm going to put in a cup of cheese, shredded sharp cheddar cheese, and you could use. Low fat, although I think the texture with low fat cheese is a little bit funky, but. Like I said, splurge a little a bit little on bit. Thanksgiving. A little bit, you don't have to eat the whole no. thing. All right, who doesn't like four bacon. slices of bacon? You think they had bacon at the very first Thanksgiving meal? I, they might have, you never know. Bacon goes with everything, everything, so they should have had it. And then four green onions chopped, put that on top. And at this point, you could freeze it, put it in the fridge till Thanksgiving day. Okay. Then you're gonna bake it 350 until it's bubbly, and that's about 30, 45 minutes, depending on how cold it is. And so that then might we still be hot. Have right? the finished product, which is a little bit hot, it's so a little hot. I'm just gonna hold it there and take a look at that. And I tried this, honestly, myself this weekend. It was delicious. Oh it's ye. Delicious. Looks delicious, and I'm spilling it everywhere, that's so I'm gonna right. put it back over here. Less for us to eat. Okay. <laughs> Who doesn't like pecan pie? Pecan pie. Definitely says Thanksgiving. So, but this one, I'll tell you, if you get a sugar buzz, if you want one, this is your dish. All right, you got a cup of sugar, a cup of corn syrup, mm -hmm. light or dark. I just like the light because I think pecans make it dark enough. Okay. 
think I'm getting eggs. a sugar contact I buzz know. right now. <laughs> Smell it. <laughs> three eggs beaten. And I made this for a, when my son was in high school, a charity mm -hmm. bake sale. I made four of them. They were the first things gone. All right, two tablespoons of butter, melted or softened. Like I said, this is just a classic pecan pie. You could add chocolate chips if you wanted, but why mess with perfection? Exactly. Okay, and then a cup and a half of pecans. And Georgia I like pecans. To, Georgia pecans, and that makes a big difference. Um, and I like to use a cup of chopped and a half a cup of whole. Okay. Okay. Any particular reason? Just looks better. Okay. See how easy that is? Just stir that up. You're going to pour it in a prepared pie shell. And you know I didn't make the pie shell. I don't do that. And this you can definitely make a couple of days ahead of time. You bake this at 350 for about 45 minutes until a toothpick comes out clean in the center. Look at the texture of that. I mean, it's so good. How do you <laughs> argue with that? Okay. And then I'll grab the finished product over here. And that butter will obviously melt. Yeah, and there's that. And then we're going to do a make-ahead cr frozen cranberry salad, which will be on your website. Um, and this is really good. It's got powdered sugar, cream cheese, pecans, a whole, a can of whole cranberries, cranberry sauce. And that falls under salad, okay. It's under salad, yeah. Right. It's got pecans. Um, it's, it's really good. And you can put them in little muffin cups like this, or you can put it in a loaf pan and slice it, whatever is your preference on that. Very nice. Well, let me just say... Happy Thanksgiving Happy to you. Thanksgiving. Thank you for playing along. And folks, just a reminder, you can find all these delicious recipes by logging on to gfb.org slash recipes. Everything is there for you in detail, so you cannot go wrong. Marsha does a great job. Thank you, Ray. Yee, Marsha. Thank Yee, you so oh, much. Yee of little fat. <laughs> Kenny, we'll send it back to you. Ray, Marsha, love those costumes. Well, deep fried turkey has become the norm at Thanksgiving. But every year, people forget to take those important safety steps, and the results can be disastrous. From our friends at the Virginia Beach Fire Department, here's the do's and don'ts of deep fried turkey. U.S. fire departments respond to a thousand fires a year involving deep fryers. In fact, the U.S. Fire Protection Association wants you to know that deep fryers are responsible for five deaths, 60 injuries, and $15 million in property damage every year. That's why the Virginia Beach Fire Department is holding this demonstration to show you just how quickly a fire can erupt from a turkey fryer. The Virginia Beach Fire Department would like to remind you that these fryer fires are preventable and offer some safety tips for cooking your holiday feast with a deep fryer. First, thaw that turkey. A partially frozen turkey can create a fire or an explosion, as it did in this case. Experts recommend thawing the turkey 24 hours for every five pounds. So a 10 pound turkey should be thawed for 48 hours. Stay with it. Watch it at all times while cooking. Be safe. Use thick pot holders or oven mitts when touching the handles or lid of the fryer. It's also a good idea to wear eye protection and long sleeves to protect against splattering oil. Don't overfill the pot. Oil can spill into the burner. Slowly lower the turkey into the pot to prevent oil from splashing. Always use a thermometer to monitor the temperature of the oil. Over 350 degrees, that oil can become very combustible. Never fry a turkey indoors. Make sure the fryer is positioned at least 10 feet from the nearest structure. If there is a fire, don't spray water on the pot or try to cool the oil down with ice. Always use a fire extinguisher. Now for the purpose of our demonstration, we did everything wrong. Most importantly, we overheated the oil and we used a partially frozen bird. Can't emphasize enough how important it is that your turkey is completely thawed before you slowly put it into the oil. Now, all that said, there are grocery stores and restaurants that will actually deep fry a turkey for you. Let them do the cooking, all you have to do is eat it. 
I'm Art Kahn, the Public Information Officer for the Virginia Beach Fire Department. If you have any more questions about this, you can reach me at the information you see on your screen. Have a great holiday, everybody. Some great information there. Well, the calendar may say Thanksgiving, but it's also time to start thinking about that Christmas tree. When we come back, a visit to one Georgia tree farm that's been growing holiday spirit for generations. Stay tuned. I'm Laura Perry Johnson. I'm from Moultrie, Georgia, and I am thankful for my family, but also that I live in the state of Georgia, which is the perfect place for agriculture. I'm Tina Rozier. I'm from Blackshear, Georgia. I'm thankful for my family and friends and thankful for the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, finally today around our house, Thanksgiving among many things also means it's time to put up that Christmas tree. The Monitor's Mark Wildman visited one farm that has spent many decades growing trees to brighten homes for the holidays. All year long, Chuck Berry works this tree farm in Covington, Georgia, so families can enjoy the look and the fragrance of a fresh cut Georgia Christmas tree. Throughout the farm, trees of all sizes can be found and families can take their pick. The Berry family goes way back in Covington, and even though the population has grown, they have been able to adapt and make a living on the farm. We've been here farming Christmas trees for almost 40 years. The family's been on the farm since 1894, so we've um, been here in the community for a long time and fortunately been able to farm the property for, for uh, you know, a long period of time and keep it in the family. Of course, when you are a Christmas tree farmer, you spend a lot of time working for just a few short weeks when consumers show up, not only to look for a tree, but to make Christmas time memories as well. You get to see the families come out with their children and experience the farm, go out and pick their own tree, um, train rides, concession stands, just something that's a little bit different from picking up a tree off of a sidewalk or a big box retailer. All the trees here are not the same, and the farm specializes in growing many different varieties. So we have the Leland Cypress, the Virginia Pine, we have Cedar, have a new tree that's been on the market for the last few years, the Murray Cypress, Carolina Sapphire. Again, there's a lot of different varieties, a lot of different styles, different colors. This is a Naylor's Blue. Um, it's a variety of the Cypress. Um, it's a little more feathery type limb, but it makes a very pretty tree very hardy tree. It's just got a little lighter green color than some of them, but um, you know, it's all about what the people prefer. And we like to offer, you know, several varieties so that they have a choice when they come to pick out their tree. Everything is all ready for the customers to arrive now, but it takes a lot of work to keep the farm looking this good. The farm has to trim the trees twice a year, and a lot of time and effort is spent keeping the weeds away. Not only does this farm sell trees to the public, but they support a program to help military families have a Merry Christmas. Trace for Troops gives the opportunity to military families to have a, a real Christmas tree at Christmas time. Uh, Barry's Tree Farm this year is a drop-off point, meaning that FedEx will actually bring a trailer here. Um, the farm has committed at least 75 trees from surrounding farms. Those trees will be picked up and taken to Fort Rucker in Alabama for the military families to have that special Christmas tree, that real live Christmas tree at Christmas time, just gives them something that they may not otherwise be able to get or to have at Christmas time if it wasn't part of the Trees for Troops program. So if you are looking for a good tree and a lot of fun, take a trip to Covington or to another one of Georgia's many Christmas tree farms. In Newton County, I'm Mark Wildman for the Georgia Farm Monitor. All right, Mark, great job, sir. Unfortunately, that does it for our very first Thanksgiving special. For all the latest ag info, be sure to check out our Twitter, Facebook, and Pinterest pages. You'll stay informed and see what's up in the world of farming and here on the Farm Monitor Show. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Have a great week.